What's up everybody? This is the chosen individual here and today What the hell is going on with the amazing digital circus? The dumpster fire is burning and it smells like trash. Who was the man who lit the fire? It's more than one actually For those of you who aren't caught up the amazing digital circus is a brand new weird core slash comedy series which is brand new to glitch productions excellent five-star indie animation series lineup coming from the mind of gooseworks the pilot itself made its debut on october 13th of this year and is so far one of if not the most viewed glitch pilot in existence that i at least have ever seen with my two prickly human eyes counting around 102 million views and 3.7 million likes at the time I'm writing this, of course, and holy lord, I was not expecting such massive attention. I never doubted its potential in the first place, but Jesus, I was surely surprised at that one. And now that I have seen the pilot and bathed my eyeballs in the magic of this masterpiece, I can say that attention and praise is well deserved. But hold on, I'm not here to review the series since, well, I'm not a review channel, and it's just a pilot, but rather I'm here because apparently this show has people around the internet all up in arms. From YouTube to other questionable websites, it's irrefutable it has dragged eyes from across the world. Uh, in case you haven't watched the pilot yet, I highly, highly advise you do before uh, you go and watch this video. The link will be down below of course since hey. My description should be as big as other people's descriptions, other YouTubers who might be bigger or smaller than me. I should not be shamed for the size of my description. Uh, you, do need, you do not need to watch the pilot to understand, uh, but it'd be, it'd help your mind, you know? And there will be some small story spoilers in this video, so yeah, that's another reason to go watch the pilot. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Be warned, adventurers, because beyond this point, things start to get pretty hairy. Alright gamers, let's put on our hazmat suits and our trusty gas masks, because what we're about to explore is uncharted territory. Ready, set, go! Our first order of business is the criticism against it. Now, I personally absolutely loved the pilot. In a sense, it might have been better than Murder Jones's pilot. It was almost flawless. Of course, it's all an opinion, but strangely to me, there still seems to be some people criticizing the series. Now, of course, all criticism is valid to a certain extent. And so long as you aren't completely disconnected from the actual conversation and reality, run your, run your mouth wild. I don't care, okay? So I shall save myself from harassment and being roasted by people saying that I'm trying to force my opinions on others. I would, if I could, but I'm not. I'm not that chosen. <laughs> Get it? Anyway, our first lineup for the night is the Not So Amazing Digital Circus by Sarcastic Chorus. Now, by reading the channel name, I'm a bit worried I might be feeding the troll, but eh, innocent until proven guilty. So basically, in this video, Mr. Chorus explains his take and his opinion on the pilot of the series. And I just, I just love how at the beginning he acknowledges that he's going to get beaten up. I'm not going to show any uh, portions of his video, by the way. You can go and check that out if you're interested. Uh, but Mr. S uh, Chorus, if you're watching this for any reason, I, I don't hate you. Your take isn't that bad. Humor is subjective. It's just not your thing. Tangent over, basically Mr. Chorus explains that the show is, quote, trying too hard, unquote, and that he simply does not give in so easily into the psychological horror of being trapped in a crappy child show-esque world. And while after listening to his professional witness testimony, I partially agree with him, I would also like to counter say that by stating that we can all mostly agree that the show is good at planting little elements to unsettle the viewer. However, it almost seems to intentionally fall apart when it's going for the big play, you know, like... It's almost like it's meant to be threatening, 
but it ends up being funny and goofy. And what's what you come to expect from a weird course slash dark comedy, I still argue that it fits in well, and just ends up making the show better than if the big plays didn't fall apart, because otherwise it would just be too depressing. It's funny and charming without being an absolute slapstick comedy, and it's somewhat unsettling and ex existentialist without being depressive nightmare fuel. It kind of feels like a diversion, a diversion ta tactic, you know? It's like, it's intentionally so bad with these attempts and an effort to manipulate the viewer because everyone expects an unsettling attack, but nobody expects that the attack will be coming from our own interpretation of the show rather than on screen. He also argues that Kane's design is distracting, which is... I'm sorry, man. I can't, I can't hold the facade together anymore. It's just... Wow. Okay, okay. So, when someone speaks to you, where do you look? Away? Their stomach? Their toenails? No! Their eyes! So the argument that, quote, I always find myself focusing on his eyeballs, unquote, is like, bruh. Come on, it's obvious that's intentional. That's how you look at people when they're talking to you. Also, I don't know about you, but neither the tent's design or Kane's design ever distracted me. Like, I always I always felt like the camera was pointed uh, correctly. The camera was always pointed to a place where the action was happening. Usually Pomni or any of the other characters. So, I, I don't know, man. In short, I partially agree with uh, Chorus's sake. But still, I feel like it falls apart under the basic, the most basic of scrutiny. And as a professional overthinker myself, I have plenty of scrutiny to give. I give this take a Pomni plush out of 10. Right. We're halfway through, boys. Now, on to the next section. A fair warning, <laughs> this next section may contain content that could not be appropriate for all audiences. No explicit imagery or offensive language will be used. However, if you still want to redeem your bliss your blissful ignorance, then thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. But for all of you who wish to stay, come and keep following me down the rabbit hole. We all know Rule 34. It is quite a prominent part of the internet, and despite the fact most of us uh, would prefer to look in the other direction and throw rocks at this section of the internet, let's face it, it exists, and we all know it. Quote, Rule 34 of the internet. If it exists, there's... special imagery of it. No exceptions. Unquote. Now, anyone right now with a functioning prefrontal cortex who are still living in bliss blissful ignorance might think, well chosen, how exactly does Rule 34 relate to this? How does this series about colorful characters getting stuck in a digital circus relate to special imagery? Oh my little adorable unprepared fools. It relates to everything. In the same vein that murder drones and many other pieces of media have been framed in the crosshairs of these artists, with the amazing digital circuses release came a barrage of explicit and non-explicit community content. Stories, AI characters, OCs, memes, shit posts, ships, and other things. The community has gone rampant and most of the focus and spotlight has been centered on one or two characters specifically. Pomni, our desperate existential crisis having gesture girl, and Jax, our despicable prank playing bunny. God, imagine if it was the other way around. Holy lord, that would be the bane of our innocence. Pomni has been the spotlight ever since the show's pilot was released, from people making fun of her expressions and cluelessness, to people who are banned from going anywhere near circuses. I understand that Pomni got this sort of attention. I mean, come on, so did Uzi and Murder Drones, and she still does. And we can all agree that we can make the connection that once the more once the more tame content came, so would the other come, just by natural circulation. Since, well, it's a quote-unquote rule. Come on. Some people have blamed this phenomenon on the show's creator, Gooseworks, since her handling of the situation was odd, to say the least. You could argue that she is guilty of sexualizing her own characters. But hold your horses. Let's review the evidence together, shall we? In each of her posts that got quite a bit of attention, she says, quote, This ain't my first rodeo. 
I've been around long enough to know Rule 34 is inevitable. I'm just getting ahead of the curve and letting people know it's not illegal. By the way, she is referring to the fact that Pony's confirmed canon age is 25. And I see that it is very easy to point the finger at her response and blame the horrible uprising on her, but... You know, she does bring up a compelling point. Rule 34 is inevitable. Whatever rises has to fall, so no guilt on that side. She can't really be dictated guilty of something she can't really control. So we can all put our hands together and drop the character sexualization charges on her. She isn't saying it's right or wrong. She's simply say saying she doesn't give a damn. But still, it's difficult not to look at this fiasco and say, well then who is responsible for this? Since this has risen to the point that even googling her name can lead you to explicit artwork and interpretations of her character. At least it's not literal CP, but Jesus Christ, man. This has gone so far out of control that it's hard not to come across it, even by accident. Just like, every time you find actually cool non-explicit fan art, it's almost like you found a freaking Alexandrite. If you know, you know. It's a complete revelation. There are good artists out there, and for all I care, do all the explicit artwork you want. I don't care, but don't rub it in our faces, alright? We just wanna have- we just want to see a funny series, not lost over every single character and thing out in the observable universe. Yes. What? You don't say. You don't say. You don't say! Now, from here, the degeneracy only continues. That's right, I guess the first part of this video was a facade, because my sources tell me that we now have new charges to raise against the community for doxing and harassment. But don't, don't, if you don't trust me, that's okay, don't take it from me. Mr. Iox, if you'll please take the stand. Where they allege that Gooseworks has a drilling finish and provides screenshots of old art Gooseworks made. Gooseworks of course responded jokingly saying that they can't prove it's a fetish, not taking it particularly seriously because why would you? This all happened way back in 2021 and I'm sure Goose had long forgotten this discussion even took place given how meaningless it was. She responded to the most recent post saying it's kind of hilarious because it is. It's no surprise that this kind of discourse spawns from places like 4chan but the fact they take it so seriously and spread it everywhere as some sort of black mark against Gooseworks is comical. Fortunately, however, things would only ever escalate from this point onward. It all started over on 4chan where they decided to dox Gooseworks. This deplorable behavior then spread over onto other platforms. It even started just being posted randomly with no context. Even if you dislike a creator or their show, there's absolutely no excuse for this behavior and it achieves absolutely nothing. All this unfortunately spilled over to when Glitch Productions hosted GlitchX 2023, a live stream showing off their creators and guests with upcoming projects and some general Q&A. The hate mob then decided to brigade the Chat, spamming and posting her docs live on air. Fortunately, YouTube's auto detect managed to do some damage control, but it obviously wasn't enough to get rid of all of it. Wow. Just. Oh my god. I honestly didn't expect it to be this terrible. Uh, thank you, Iox, for the testimony. Folks, now, as much as I would like to also get testimony of the Queen herself for this video and her take on this stuff, I understand that she might not want to be bothered about it any further. And I have to respect that, you know, remember, professionalism, and also because I'm too shy, but that doesn't matter. This, 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 this is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Uh, sure, some people have weird tendencies or fetishes or other things, but doxing someone over such asinine things is just like... <laughs> doxing. <laughs> doxing, what the fuck? Bro, what the fuck? Doxing someone. Apparently she wasn't just doxed, she was harassed too during Glitch's own fucking event. How? How does this happen? Uh, like, to be fair, I wasn't there to watch the section of the stream where this happened, so I can't criticize or praise Glitch for the handling of the situation. Although, hell, 
With these hands up approaches, it's possible they didn't even fucking notice. Who knows? But now, and after successfully dodging the explicit content, we answer the million dollar question that we asked at the beginning. That only people over 150 IQ can get correct. Who was the man who lit this dumpster fire? Well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it was the community. For once, I can excuse the Rule 34 artists, like, okay, sure, what they're doing is, um, a little strange. In comparison to this, that is fucking cupcake behavior. And we can, we should all be able to point the finger to these other people who decided it would be egregiously funny, just hilarious, to threaten and, and to harass Threaten and dox the creator and say, hey, that guy is a piece of shit. Like, okay, if you don't like the show, then fine. Criticize it all you want. I don't care, dude. Do the most dog water, uh, uh, unhinged, biased takes I have ever seen in the history of humanity. This is a free world, after all. But when you start bullying and harassing people, that's the line you're not meant to cross. Even if you hate the creator's guts, even if you think this behavior is disgusting, it's just, oh my god. Like, you know what? I got, I got a better, I got a better harassment technique for you guys. Why don't you fucking light yourself on fire? We truly live in the worst timeline. If people are being bullied over this shit, when it comes to like, exposed type content, there's a word that comes to mind. And I just said it a little bit ago. And that word is professional. You wanna come across like a professional. Like you know what you're talking about. Like you have receipts. Like you have evidence. Like you like you know what's going on. Like you're not rattled or, or, butt, or butt hurt. And these lol cows surely have a hard time with that. They are clearly upset about this ordeal. They are upset that her and her series is getting such good attention and reviews from being a great masterpiece while they sit in their mother's basement eating bean and cheese tacos for dinner. These people have no problems wasting hours and hours of their lives bitching and moaning on Twitter, screeching into the void. It's like watching someone burn their finger on a hot pan over and over again. They just want to watch the world burn. They merely want to ruin this piece of media for you. You are a factory of sadness! It boggles the mind. It fucking boggles the mind. In the end, the recent controversy surrounding the release of the Amazing Digital Circus is a total clusterfuck and totally pathetic. Twitter and 4chan continue to prove me and many others right by continuing to portray themselves as rabid imbeciles who cannot handle an opinion outside their hive mind. We should all continue to show the series the love and support it deserves and continue to support the creator who worked endlessly to bring us a masterpiece. But what is your opinion? Let me know down in the comments. I really want to hear your input on this. I know this has been kind of up in the air for what I usually post, but uh, the amount of idiocy and, and shitheads I saw, it it sparked a fire in my heart. I just had to vent on it in a little bit. But anyways guys, that's all I have for today. Remember to leave a like and subscribe for more great content. This has been The Chosen Individual, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, gamers!